this is Hugh for Tone Twins TV and we've got a great little project lined up for this video which is the restoration of a very early 1950s Tweed TV Front Pro Amplifier. This amp has recently been retweeted by Roy Coupland down in West Wales. Uh, he's done a fantastic job and he's he's used uh, raw tweed which basically means that there's no uh, varnish, no coating on it and I've been asked to do the top coats on this to try and make it look like uh, an original um, early 50s amp, well the original 1950s amp that it actually is. Uh, I did a very similar project for Guitar Magazine a few years back and it turned out pretty well and I'm just going to take you through the procedure that I would use uh, with a tweed amp restoration but equally if you've got a modern tweed amp and uh, you want it to have some kind of have a kind of vintage vibe to it, you can follow exactly the same procedures. Uh, the way I learned to do it was basically getting online and plowing through page after page after page of people talking about kind of stuff you can get from the hardware store, um, various waxes, varnishes, whatever. And you know, none of them really seem to make a lot of, lot of sense to me. There's modern amplifier manufacturers who offer tweeds, and a lot of them, like Lazy J and Rift, have got their own great look. Uh, it's not exactly vintage correct, but it's it's their look, and I think that's really uh, appropriate. But um, for something like this, which is a vintage restoration, my instinct is that if, if you want to achieve results that are convincingly vintage looking, it's best to use the original techniques and I found this post by this guy like eight pages into some furious debate and he said look I actually talked to a couple of guys who worked for Fender back in the 50s and they explained how they did it and what he said was that they coat they coated the tweed with a shellac like a, a sanding sealer before actually spraying it with nitrocellulose and the shellac makes a lot of sense because nitro is expensive stuff and shellac's pretty cheap and the two are actually compat compatible with each other and tweed like this is, is fabric and it will soak up an awful lot of lacquer before you start to get any kind of build on it so I'm going to start by uh, coating the, the cabinets and the back panels that have come with the amplifier uh, I'm going to start coating them uh, using a brush and some Shellac. So the shellac I use is uh, comes from a company that's local to me in South Wales uh, called Fiddies, and they do some great products, including nitrocellulose. Um, you can get this stuff all over the world. It's a very common product, but the key thing is that it shouldn't have any waxes in it. If there are waxes in the shellac, um, it it basically uh, makes it more difficult for the or even impossible for the nitrocellulose to adhere to the surface properly and you can end up with uh, pretty messy results. So what you need is clear, uh, slightly tinted obviously, but you don't see too much of that. You need clear shellac with no wax. And as I said, I'm just gonna apply it with a brush. Um, I'll show you how I do it, but there's uh, no great skill involved with this. We can tell that things are getting serious because I've got my pinny on. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically use this shellac that I've poured into a little takeaway container. It's going to be brushed on and I flip the cabinet onto its front so I can do all the, the back edges first and then I'm going to flip it over, elevate it off the work surface and then finish uh, brushing uh, the shellac on the rest of the cabinet. I'm not being especially dainty or careful with this. Um, the idea is to, to basically end up at the end of the process, you know, two or three coats of this, with a much flatter surface than you would otherwise have with just the raw tweed. Because if you've got a, if you feel a lot of these vintage amplifiers, run your hands over them. Uh, you'll notice that they they generally have quite a smooth feel to them. Uh, raw tweed is, is pretty rough and bumpy, but that's certainly not the way vintage amplifiers feel, and it's certainly not the way they look. So I'm just going to get loads of this stuff on here. At the moment it's 
the, the tweed is just soaking it up like a sponge, which is kind of what I want it to do. And doing this layer is, is pretty easy because uh, you can actually see the colour changing, it's already slightly darker. Okay, that's the, uh, the back done, so I'm going to flip this over now, uh, elevate it and uh, finish the rest of the cabinet. Having seen me do the back, I'm sure you've got the idea of how to brush shellac onto a cabinet, so we'll check back in when I finish doing two or three coats. So this is how the cabinet looks after it's had the shellac applied. I did about three coats, I let it go completely set and uh, I've scuffed this back with some 180 grit paper. So the, the effect of the shellac is to seal the tweed, it feels an awful lot smoother, it's mellowed the colour already and it feels really nice. It feels like old tweed now when you uh, rub your finger over it, much more so than the, the raw tweed does. So. I'm going to take this outside now and I'm going to spray it with some nitrocellulose lacquer um, outdoors on a still day with very little wind I think is the, is the best way to do this and it can sit outside and dry off as well so uh, hopefully this is uh, going to start looking a lot more finished uh, very shortly. The first coats of nitrocellulose have been applied and it's a really even colour. It's fairly pale, which is quite appropriate for uh, an early 50s uh, tweed cabinet. But um, if you're doing this yourself, you might want to just stop here, to be honest. And it's uh, you'd have a, a very nice uniform look. Um, it would look like a fairly pristine tweed amp. Uh, but because this one is old and the rest of the amp looks quite old, of the chassis and everything. I want to make the the cabinet look uh, more of a piece with the, with the rest of the parts. So the next stage for this one is to add some shaded tinted coats of nitrocellulose just strategically around just to make the colour a little less even, make it darker in some places than others and just give it a slightly more kind of authentic patina and after that I'm going to be doing a little bit of relicking. After the shading coats are done, um, it's, it's, the finish is no longer like an even colour. It's kind of darker in some areas than others. And on the sides of the cabinet, it's almost like a little kind of subtle sunburst kind of effect. Um, again, you could stop here if you wanted, uh, just have a nice colour to your cabinet without making it look older or trying to relic it in any way. But I'm going to take this stage further. I'm going to use this stuff called a scotch pad, which is about uh, 320 grit so it's not too abrasive and I'm just going to rub over the cabinet now and just knock off any high spots make it 
kind of even smoother and probably just put a little bit of a kind of uh, a wear in certain areas just to kind of um, give it a bit more kind of feeling of age. So let's have a look at that now and uh, see how it works out. Okay, so I'm just going to start on this area here. I can feel the difference already. It's just smooths it all out, makes it feel much more like a 1950s cabinet. Hopefully it'll make it uh, look that way too. This is quite a quick procedure. It's not going to take me very long at all. When you rub through in certain areas, like it's just beginning to show here, this is why I don't like staining the cabinets. Give it a little bit more of a rub. Just bring that into focus. So just here, um, I'm rubbing through uh, all the coats of lacquer back down to the raw tweed and you get that kind of really light look. When you stain a cabinet, um, or you stain tweed rather, um, it penetrates into the tweed and you, you might not be able to kind of rub through and get those kind of lighter patches, which is all part and parcel of the kind of the aged look, I think. So I'm just going to keep uh, rubbing through this now and uh, probably take me about 15 minutes and I'll be all done. Well, I've rubbed the whole thing down very thoroughly now and you can see little bits where it's uh, going through to the lighter tweed underneath. Just starting to look a little bit aged. One thing that you, you can't really pick up on the camera is, is, is the feel really, which is um, so much smoother and just feels really nice and kind of worn in. There's that kind of subtle sunbursting on the side. You can just see it down there. So the next stage is to uh, introduce, introduce a little bit of deliberate wear and tear. And I'll show you how I do that now. So I've got this selection of high-end tools. Joking, obviously. This is just kind of like a light, couple of light rasps and a slightly heavier rasp. And I'm going to be targeting areas around the kind of edges and the corners. This looks super neat. Rory did a great job here joining the tweed. Um, but typically these exposed corners are the ones that get the wear. So what I'm going to do is, is be uh, working my way through to the light tweed underneath and I'm just going to use a rasp for that and immediately you can see the colour change. This is just creative thing really, just use your eye, enjoy the process, and don't get too carried away. Okay, so I've got a little bit of wear on there now, and the other thing I like to do is to work my way along um, these kind of exposed edges, so what you can do is kind of and working back to front is just kind of scuff along okay so just kind of putting in signs of wear where you would normally see them okay I'm kind of liking that there just Adding a few little scuffs on the corners. Try and be kind of random, mix it up a bit. And use that slightly heavier rasp. There you go. So as you can see now, this is starting to look a little bit frayed and a little bit worn. So what I'll probably do now is, is work my way down this edge. Go back to the lighter rasp again. Taking a bit off that corner. And work my way down. 
this kind of shows like a really nice contrast uh, against the tinted lacquer that I put on and it really helps it kind of pop out. So basically I'm going to work my way around the cabinet and hopefully at the end of it this is going to look quite nice and probably end up adding just a little bit of uh, dirt at the end and just to finish it off before reassembly. I thought you'd like to just gauge the progress a little bit. Um, as you can see I've put a load of wear on the on the edges, a bit of fraying on the corners and all along the edge. Same thing at the top. So there you go, it's looking a lot older. This is the non-age side. It's a little bit different. Having done all the scuffs and uh, just kind of drawn out the, the threads a little bit on the tweed and just made it look a little bit worn. It, I'm really liking what I'm seeing, but it's just looking a little bit two-toned to me. So what I'm going to do is just get some uh, dirt into this, uh, just darken up a little bit. And what I've done is just burnt up some newspaper just to create a little bit of uh, that sooty type stuff and I'm just gonna get that on my hands and just rub it in and instantly just start getting a little bit more of a kind of interesting look it's kind of going a little bit heavier on the dirt at the bottom because cabinets often tend to look a little bit dirtier than that just kind of work it in really You can also use a charcoal pencil if you uh, want to get really kind of accurate with this. I get it on there and just give it a rub with your finger. Okay. So I'm just going to work my way around the cabinet and just add a little bit of dirt here and there just to add to this impression of, of age and wear. As you can see none of the techniques that I'm using require any specialist tools or great deal of uh, skill to, to do and the only thing you really need to buy is, uh, is the lacquer itself and the shellac. If you go a little bit too heavy, don't worry, a lot of this will just come off. Just the residual soot on your hands, just work it in. Okay, starting to look pretty good. That's the whole cabinet done. So I'm just going to get the hoover out, clean up the workbench and we can start thinking about putting this whole thing back together. So this is where the fun really begins and the cabinet starts to look finished. Um, I've got to get all the bits and pieces back on and this is the original nameplate badge uh, for the amp which is such a cool thing to have. And I'm going to put this on first because it actually pins in and I want to use the original uh, nail holes or uh, pin holes but you can't really do that when the amplifier itself the chassis is mounted so I'm going to put this on first problem is where are the holes well there's a really simple solution to this if you're lucky and I think we're gonna be right down inside here uh, can see the original holes where the pins broke through to the other side. One, two, there's three of them. The other one's concealed under here. So what I'm going to do is get a sewing pin and push them through these holes and that'll show me exactly where the pinholes need to be on the other side. I can just 
um, put the badge over those pins and pull them out one at a time and tap in the, uh, the original pins, three of which still survive. A bit of pressure that goes straight through. straight through and these should line up really nicely so this is going back in exactly the same position as it did when this amp was new so if it ends up looking a little bit wonky don't go giving me a hard time Procedure for the for the handle screws is exactly the same, but I don't need to be quite so delicate. Uh, this is a larger hole punch, and I can clearly see all four holes, and I see a couple of extras that were obviously added at some point. Not quite sure why. One, two, three, four. Fingers crossed now. I can, yeah, I can just feel the holes now. So there I've got four very clearly marked holes now for the handle. And again, I obviously needed to do that uh, prior to putting the chassis back in. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't have had any, any access and I would have been prodding around randomly trying to find the holes there. The other holes I need to locate are the chassis fixing holes there on each side. Of this cutout. These are a lot easier to find actually. I can just find that just by pressing the top because the holes are much bigger and because there's quite substantial bolts go through those. Right, the other thing I need to do is find the holes for the speaker baffle. And the tweed kind of covers everything over, unfortunately. But I can feel one there. Because this is a Pro, it has a, two extra holes compared to the TV Front Deluxe. Because the baffle's so much bigger, I had to support a 15-inch speaker. So I've located those two and I may have a harder time locating the others. I think that's one just there. Yep. Okay. That's another one. Okay, that should be all the fixing holes located and uh, I can start putting this thing back together. Okay, I'm going to get this handle on next and uh, I've already just kind of tapped a hole through because there's this pin in the middle that goes through this slot at the end of the handle and then it's held in by two screws. So. That lines up really well. This is a repro handle as you can no doubt see. So what I'm going to do is just tap this in. I'm going to do it too hard. I don't want to bend or break anything because these are original um, handle brackets but obviously a repro handle. Um, also the original screws have gone missing so I had to rummage through my parts drawer and found some rusty screws out in the shed which will hopefully look the part looks okay about there I think what I might 
might do is just put a screw in, partially in, just to hold it in place. Just take this beyond the top of the bracket. Okay, that's the handle then. Let's just open up these holes a little bit. Just create a bit of clearance. And I'm just going to tap them through gently. when you put this stuff on the cabinet it all suddenly starts to look a lot more finished. Okay so it's time to put the speaker baffle in and it's a nice opportunity to see how the little fabric at the front of the speaker baffle fades so quite a kind of chocolatey brown originally and it just kind of gets this kind of washed out color so basically this has got to come in sideways and then you just got to try and line those bolt holes up over the bolts right let's get the bolts on and we can think about mounting the chassis To mount the chassis. Right, the bolts are already through the cabinet, so I've just got to line up with the chassis holes. Slide this on, looking good. So I'm just going to hold that really tightly in place. Try to find a washer and a nut. And I want to get this tightened up as quickly as possible. This would originally, well this is a replacement transformer, but it probably would have mounted, the original would have mounted on the speaker if it wasn't uh, a field coil. Um, so lots of wires dangling out of this, so I'm going to have to figure out what goes where before I can fire this one up. Ed's joined us and this is his first look at the amp, he's going to take it away and demo it for the video. And uh, it's your first look, so what do you think? Cracking job, mate. It's um, it's funny. There's obviously there's many many things about it, relic guitars and relic amps and stuff, mm. but to me instantly it's just got the vibe, which is crucial. You just well, want to plug into it. Yeah, you know, it just yeah. looks and feels. I mean, obviously it is yeah. an old amp. Yeah. You, you know the the chrome and stuff you can see, but yeah, it's just got totally got the look. I mean, okay, not quite the original. The right tweed would have been for the era, but you can't get that stuff. Oh, well, it's, it's funny, isn't it? 
a mate of mine uh, was doing a bit of restoration work on his 5A3, and he'd actually figured out a way to bleach the tweed. So, uh, and he, he was telling me about it, so thanks Tony if you're watching. Um, so if I get another really early one again, that's something you know I'll have to consider doing. Because this, this tweed is the slightly later tweed with the slightly darker stripe. Isn't yeah, it? you get the low contrast tweed on the, on the early ones. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it's a funny thing as well, because it's like, it's like relic in amps, so I mean, every, you know, everything started off with relic like, and vintage guitars, and then people started relic in acoustics, and now we're relic in amps. I mean, pff, I, you can get into a debate if you want, you're on the comment section, it's absolutely fine, or you can <laughs> yeah. take it to a less cool forum if you want, but yeah, we're not joining <laughs> it. I mean, suffice to say, uh, the owner requested a vintage finish, and I thought it was a legitimate request. I think it's entirely appropriate to do mm -hmm. it. If he'd asked me to do it like day glow pink, um, there wouldn't be a video because I wouldn't have done the job. So that's all I can say about it. I think it's sympathetic to the right age, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, somebody who's because there's parts of the amp which are obviously all original, like this top panel and stuff, which do have quite a, an age look to them. Mm -hmm. It would look odd if those were in brand new looking cabinet you know yeah completely and it's what's weird as well it's like um your perceptions as you're doing it uh change because I'm, I'm i'm working away and i think oh maybe i've gone a bit ott here maybe I'm, i've, I've mm -hmm. taken it a little bit too far and then once you put everything on the badge goes on everything's in there i was looking at it thinking actually this is a really light relic yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's a bit like when you're carving a guitar neck and it you get one perception without the strings on, and then putting the strings on, your perception of it all, all, all changes. And I think when you're doing relicking work like this, if you can kind of get the hardware on as, as a reference, and this applies to guitars, amps, whatever you're doing, Absolutely. and kind of have a look at it in context to gauge how far you want to take it. And it's always better to stop early and add some more relicking <laughs> yeah, yeah. than take it too far. Well, then hopefully uh, this is now an amp that people could go and use, you know, and enjoy for another... You know, 50, 60 years. There's no reason why it shouldn't. It's not like the, the, the software's going to go obsolete, is it? Yeah, it doesn't need an up, update. It didn't, the didn't have uh, built-in obsolescence back in, <laughs> in, in the early 50s. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so Ed's going to take this off now and uh, give us a little bit of a demo and we'll do some nice kind of close-up shots so you can see the, the work that's been done in detail. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you all again soon. Take care. Diolch and Mawr. Diolch. Thank you.